Alright guys, so we're checking out the uh, Yixin Mini Wing Dragon. It's a new uh, RC airplane from Yixin, I think. It's probably a collaboration with Volantix RC. It seems pretty similar to some of the other ones like the P-51. However, it does not uh, bind with the V761 protocol on the multi-protocol modules. So they must have modified it in some way because they've added a couple features to the remote control, like I think a voltage low voltage detection from the uh, flight battery. So they're saying 15 minutes of flight time on this on a 300 milliamp hour 1S battery and the transmitter will start beeping uh, with about four or five minutes left on the battery. So it'll give you some time to get back. Uh, this is a DIY kit. It doesn't come assembled like this. It's all um, in pieces, but it's very easy to put together. Uh, you just put on the wing here, the main wing with two screws and there's a tail section. The, the toughest part is getting that horizontal stabilizer on. It just sticks onto the back of this carbon fiber rod. So it's, it's a very tight friction fit. And there's no glue that's needed any, anywhere here. So it's just the two screws and that's it. And so getting that on was a little tricky. Uh, that was probably the, the thing that took the longest. So you get, get that on first, and then you stick the vertical stabilizer on, uh, hooks into the horizontal stabilizer. And then you just have to, um, uh, adjust your control links and control rods. Uh, they're just basically on little screws. You can uh, twist them clockwise to shorten them and counterclockwise to increase the length. And just make sure that your control surfaces are neutral. And then um, you also have ailerons as well. Um, so it's four channels. You have ailerons, elevator, uh, rudder, and throttle. And uh, you have a brush, uh, I think it's a 10 size brush motor. Not a whole lot of power. 580 millimeters or about 21.3 inches in wingspan very light should fly for i mean should fly like pretty slow so it's intended for first timers or beginners so you know it's pretty easy to put together should should be easy to fly we'll see here uh has a you know six uh, axis gyro a stabilizer on board now um i did uh do a little bit something different here i there's three uh, holes on the control links, and I use the ones that are uh, basically the most aggressive or closest in. Uh, the one on the uh, manual says I uh, use the one in the outer uh, hole on the elevator, but it didn't look like it had a lot of throw, and I wanted a little more control. Um, so if you want some more control, um, and it's in a smaller area, uh, go with the more aggressive um, hole links. Uh, if you're a beginner and you're flying a bigger area, then just go with what the manual suggests. I'm, just, I'm going. That's the only thing that's a little bit different. I think um, everything was the same except for the elevators. One more throw in the elevator. Now you have these detachable landing gear in the front and in the back. Um, but you know, uh, taking off, you'll need probably a very nice flat surface and a long runway. Uh, so I won't be testing that. Just going to do a hand launch. And this is what the inside looks like. You have your two servers there for the um, uh, elevator and rudder. The servo for the uh, ailerons is in the uh, just um, uh, underneath the wing there. And then the 1S battery sits in the front. Now it is, the CG feels a bit tail heavy to me. So I'll have to see maybe, um, uh, maybe it's intended for that so that you can have like sort of a high angle of attack and fly slower. I'm not exactly sure what the designers intended for this, but you, you, I'm thinking that if the CG is a little bit too tail heavy, you could probably put a bigger battery in here and get longer flights because um, there's a little bit of extra space in here for a bigger battery. You can probably go up to at least a 600 and get a much longer flight if you want. And um, you could probably add FPV to this as well. Um, you know, it, it shouldn't have any problems in terms of adding more weight. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see an FPV mod to this model. And I'll make a uh, video in the future if there's enough interest. But yeah, this uh, canopy just sticks on here by friction. A uh, quick look at the remote. So there's a return to home button here, like on the uh, uh, the P51 and the Corsair and the uh, the Trojan. Um, you know, it basically you just uh, it detects which way you're throwing it, and it'll just come back and turn it back in that same direction. You have three modes on the gyro. You have a beginner mode, it's all the way forward intermediate in the middle and advanced all the way back. We'll be starting out in the beginner mode. You have uh, two rates on this one. So it's, it's the throttle trim here. So down is for low rates, up is for high rates. And you have your regular trims for your the, um, uh, your rudder and elevator and aileron over here. And then it just takes four 
Uh, AA battery is not included, like uh, most typical remotes out there. And I think that's about it. Um, go ahead, let's go ahead and give this a fly. All right, so I forgot there is an on-off switch on the bottom, which is nice. So after you connect the battery, turn it on, lay it on a like a level surface, turn on the remote. You see, here are three beeps, and then it should bind. And see the elevators, or the, sorry, the uh, ailerons, elevator, rudder, and then throttle. And you can hear the uh, stabilizer comes on after you hit the throttle. All right, so low rates, high rates is two beeps. Start on low rates. It's going to take off in that direction over there. So that's typical with a lot of these. Mm, it seems like it only wants to go left. Oh my god, I'm gonna land this here. I think my trims might be off or something. Let's see what's going on here. Not sure why it's only wanting to go left. The rudder doesn't seem to be active. Mm. Nothing. Yeah, elevator works, ailerons work, no rudder, so... Huh, I'll try and fly it on, uh, without the rudder. I'm not sure why I was, even with the, maybe the rudder was stuck and I was going left. That's, uh, yeah, that's, uh, kind of unfortunate. Turn on, um, high rates. And we're going to intermediate mode, so I have uh, more control. I'm going to try and fly bank and yank, just elevator and aileron only. <laughs> oh, a lot, a lot of throw in the elevator. Okay, I can go right, I can go right now. Yeah, the, uh, there's not much precise con control with these controllers, which is why I, I prefer flying with a multi-protocol radio. You can see the elevator is very touchy now. Well. Very touchy. Yeah. It's probably why they wanted to put the elevator on the, uh, the lowest setting. It'll climb like crazy. Attracted us. Some bugs are bothering me now. So it flies relatively slow. Actually, I'm going to adjust. I'm going to put the elevator back on the uh, the lower setting here. It's too. It's too. Uh, it's too touchy. Turn on the, I'm going to turn on the radio first. There we go. Oh, now, now the rudder is working again. Huh. Wow. Really bizarre. Yeah, I think there might be some issues with the, the way the controller or the, the, the flight controller works on this one. Yeah, and the stabilizer doesn't work until you hit the... Now it's working. All right, so... I'm going to go back to low rates. Beginner mode. 
and maybe it won't be as touchy because I think it was on on the high rates in the intermediate mode before. All right. All right, that's much better. You can actually just fly it without the rudder at all, really. Yeah, the elevator's still touchy. So I'm not really even flying it with the uh, rudder at all. You can just fly it with the elevator and aileron only. It's really smooth and stable. This is with the stabilizer on. As long as you're not uh, fiddling around with the controls too much and just kind of have it locked in. I don't have about half throttle here. Yeah, if you add a little bit of rudder, it'll, it'll turn much quicker. It does feel like it's flying a bit fast though. Let's see, let's get it up a little higher. I'm gonna drop the throttle there and just let it glide. So you don't need to have a lot of throttle, you can just let it glide. Oh, all right. Wow, it could fly slow too. There's no wind right now, which is ideal for something like this. No throttle there, see that? Just floats. So, I always say if you're a beginner, try and find something slow to fly. Like something like this is going to be ideal for you. Something uh, faster, you know, maybe as a second plane or third plane. Because you're gonna with something slower, you're gonna have more time to make corrections. Oh, this is actually flying pretty nicely now. Uh, it's actually working. Yeah, so these, even in the low rates in the beginner mode, you have pretty decent control. All right, let's just go ahead and I'm going to stick this into, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be happy to have the stabilizer on. This is the, this is the intermediate mode. You're going to have more, yeah, it gives you more angle of attack, uh, more, more throw on the elevator. can do, kind of do a loop. All right, let's go into expert mode here. Yeah, you can definitely fly faster. Can't really do any acrobatics with this, seems like. Let me see here. High rates, expert mode. There we go, do a loop, kind of a loop. Yeah, it wants to constantly, because it's got a dihedral, it wants to level out, natural tendency. All right, the elevator is much touchier, even in the uh, different control position. Yeah, I'll try and do a roll over it and it won't do it. Now uh, back to beginner mode there. So just something like this without without a really good controller, it's hard to really do much with it. And so with this kind of a controller, it's better to just you know fly it in beginner mode and let the stabilizer kind of let the do, let it do the flying for you. Yeah. So if you add a little bit of rudder, it'll turn faster. You know, you have much more turning angle. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, you can still crash it. Oh, I'm getting a little low there. 
I'm gonna slow it down. Let's see how slow can I go before it stalls on me. Yeah, I think that the CG is in. Um, I think it is intentionally tail heavy to give it sort of that high angle of attack. And it makes it fly a little more floaty, but it, it does also make it a little more stall. Oh, it has a ten, more tendency to stall, but I think the flight controller prevents that. So if you want to fly this in expert mode, maybe add more battery, bigger battery, more weight in the front. That'll, that'll probably uh, uh, fix the CG, I think, and make it a little bit more stable so it doesn't have a tendency to stall. There we go. So the transmitter is beeping at me now because the battery is running low. Probably about like four or five minutes of flight time left. I don't feel like the battery it's uh, it has less power. I think it's just floating. Oh, I am. Oh, I'm running out of power now. Yeah, I'm a full throttle here. I'm going to land it. Hmm. So there, the, I think the manual's lying a little bit there. The battery, as soon as the, the low voltage alarm came on, uh, power cut out within about 30 seconds. So, not sure how much total flight time that was, but maybe the batteries just need a little bit more char the charge cycles. Yeah, I'm going to turn this off. That's pretty annoying. Yeah. Turn this off. Not bad. Um, not sure what was up with the rudder. Seems to be working after a couple of reboots, so uh, maybe something was up with the flight controller or something. Uh, just, uh, you know, turn everything off and on again, and I think that probably will fix your problem if you have that. And it seems like beginner mode is probably going to be your best bet uh, to fly kind of slow, and um, obviously you want to be flying in. Uh, no wind or very low wind conditions, but this is going to be pretty good for beginners, I think. Uh, you'll be able to fly it nice and slow, uh, have pretty good control of it if you want to learn how to fly. And it's easy, pretty easy to put together. And it's like, I don't know, this, uh, this one's a two battery version. I think it was like $90. There's a three battery version. I think it's like $5 more or something like that. So it's a pretty good value. I don't like the controller, of course, because I'm more used to hobby grade controllers. Uh, maybe later on down the road if I can figure out which protocol I can use with my jumper radio then I'll come back with another video with that or if you guys want to see this in FPV I don't think the range is all that great it's 100 meters from this radio so uh, I'm not sure how viable this is for FPV anyway let me know what you guys think in the comments below I'll talk to you guys in the next one